It's finally here. We've been talking about it for months now. April 1st is the peak snowpack for California, so it's the perfect time to review the stats. After a very dry start to the winter season, was the snowpack in California's mountains able to recover? You're about to find out. Hey, let's do this. Hit that like button. Tell me off in the comment section. This is Time Bomb. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Time Bomb California Snowpack Report. We'll start today by reviewing the status of the snowpack in the Northern Sierra Trinity region. Next, we'll check out the Central and Southern Sierra regions before finishing with a review of the statewide snowpack report. After the snowpack report, I do want to give a brief update on the water levels at California's largest reservoirs. This is a tricky time for dam managers, as reservoirs are near full capacity and the spring snowmelt and runoff is about to add even more water to the situation. The snowpack in California's northern Sierra and Trinity region is arguably the most important to the state. The runoff from these mountains plays a crucial role in filling California's three largest reservoirs, Lake Shasta, Lake Oroville, and Trinity Lake. This is a chart of the April 1st average for the Northern Sierra Trinity region. April 1st is typically when the snowpack in California peaks. So the goal of this chart is to reach 100% as early as possible and remain above that line until the end of the season. The winter season started out very dry. The percentage of April 1st average did not cross the 50% line until February 5th. The atmospheric rivers in February pushed the snowpack above the 75% mark on February 20th. But the real boost came with the blizzard in early March. That snowstorm increased the snowpack to where it crossed the 100% line on March 4th. On April 1st, the percentage reached a very solid 124% of the historical April 1st average. This is terrific news for the state of California. With this amount of snow, all of the major reservoirs in Northern California should reach near full capacity during the spring runoff later this year. Now let's check on the Central Sierra region. And here we have the percentage of April 1st chart for the Central region. Initially, the region experienced a pretty dry start to the winter season. By February 4th, the day before the first atmospheric river hit, snowpack levels remained at a modest 39% of the April 1st average. However, four days later, the snowpack percentage increased to 51%. Despite these gains, by the close of February, the snowpack had only reached 67% of the April 1st average. Then the snowpack took a dramatic turn, thanks to the early March blizzard, catapulting the snowpack to 95% of the April 1st average. The snowpack finally crossed the 100% threshold on March 28th. The Central Sierra region finished this season on April 1st with a snowpack at 107% of its April 1st average. It was a nail-biter, but the snowpack did eventually end the season with above-average numbers. This is good news for the reservoirs in the Central Sierra region, like Don Pedro and the New Melones Dam. Now, on to the Southern Sierra region. This is a chart for the percentage of April 1st average for the Southern Sierra region. As you can see, the snowpack did not cross the 50% line until the first of the atmospheric rivers brought snow to the region in early February. The early March blizzard increased the percentage of April 1st average from 71% to 89%. And that's where the snowpack lagged for the next month, until some more snow landed in the area in late March. The snowpack for the Southern Sierra region finally peaked on April 1st at 101%. Although these numbers are not as strong as the Northern and Central region, the snowpack in the Southern region did eventually cross that 100% mark, giving us an average year in terms of snowpack. Now let's check out the California statewide snowpack numbers. The statewide snowpack report encompasses more than just the Trinity and Sierra regions. It includes the Klamath Basin and the Cascade Range, as well as other areas. So this report gives us the best gauge of California's snowpack, providing us with an outlook on how the entire state, how the entire state's water situation will look later on this year. Looking at the April 1st percentage chart, 
we see that the California snowpack has had a slow start to the season with big gains in early February and big gains in early March. The snowpack crossed the 100% line on March 25th and peaked on April 1st at 110% of its historical April 1st average. Again, this is great news for the state of California. That makes two years in a row where California has received above average snowpack. Okay, let's take a brief look at the status of California's five largest reservoirs. Keep in mind, this is a critical time for dam managers. Now that the winter season is pretty much over, they want the reservoirs to become as full as possible before we enter the summer season. So over the next few weeks, we should see some of these reservoirs start to approach full pool capacity. Lake Shasta is currently at 94% of its capacity. That's 117% of its historical average for this time of year. Shasta is going to be very interesting to watch for the next few weeks. We've heard from the dam manager and they have reduced outflows to try to capture as much water as they can during the spring runoff. The plan is to let the reservoir get as close to full pool as possible before increasing outflows. California's second largest reservoir, Lake Oroville, is at 88% of total capacity and 123% of its historical average. Trinity Lake is currently at 81% of its capacity. That's 110% of its historical average. California's fourth largest reservoir, the New Malonis Reservoir, is at 84% of its capacity and 135% of its historical average for this time of year. And finally, we have the San Luis Reservoir, which is lagging behind at just 73% of full pool capacity and 85% of its historical average. So all but one of California's largest reservoirs are above average capacity. And it looks like there's a healthy snowpack that will melt in the next several weeks and add even more water to these reservoirs. So like I said before, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how full these reservoirs get, especially with Shasta already being at 94% full. I mean, imagine if temperatures in Northern California rise too much in the next few weeks. If that happens, we could see the snowpack melt too fast and inundate the already full reservoirs. Again, this is a very interesting time. Hey, that's all I have for this episode. I'll be back with another episode next week. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos, like this one that talks about how exactly the Oroville Dam works. It's fascinating. Check it out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please consider subscribing. I really appreciate your support.